The Texas Rangers, the second oldest state-level law enforcement agency in the United States, was established in 1823, a mere two years after the commencement of white settlement in Texas. After the Mexican War of Independence, approximately 600 to 700 families migrated to Texas. However, the region lacked a regular army to safeguard its new residents. New empresario Stephen F. Austin took the initiative to assemble skilled frontiersmen into informal groups known as Rangers to safeguard settlers against Indian attacks and other criminal threats. It wasn't until October 17, 1835, that Texas formally established the force we now recognize as the Texas Rangers. On November 24, 1835, Robert McAlpin Williamson was appointed as the inaugural Ranger Major. Beginning with a contingent of 56 men organized into three companies, the Rangers rapidly expanded, with their numbers exceeding 300 by 1837. Despite their official authorization and increasing numbers, the Rangers saw limited service during their initial years. Throughout Texas's struggle for independence from Mexico, the Rangers occasionally undertook roles as scouts and couriers. They were also assigned less glamorous tasks, such as recovering cattle, escorting refugees, and disposing of supplies and equipment left behind by the Mexicans. After achieving independence and establishing the Republic of Texas, the law enforcement officers saw very little action during President Sam Houston's tenure. However, when Mirabeau B. Lamar assumed the presidency in 1838, he departed from Houston's policies of fostering amicable relations with the Indians. Instead, Lamar mobilized the Rangers for a conflict against the indigenous tribes. The Texas Congress granted him permission to enlist eight companies of mounted volunteers and maintain a company of 56 Rangers. A month later, he authorized the creation of five similar companies in Central and South Texas. Over the following three years, the Rangers engaged in a full-fledged war against the Indian tribes. They played crucial roles in various battles, including the Council House fight in San Antonio, the raid on Linville, and the Battle of Plum Creek. By the conclusion of Lamar's administration, the Texans had significantly weakened the strength of the most powerful Indian tribes. In December 1841, when Sam Houston was re-elected as president, he recognized the valuable contributions of the Rangers. Consequently, on January 29, 1842, he sanctioned a law that officially established a company of mounted men to serve as Rangers. This move led to the formation of a Ranger unit consisting of 150 men, led by Captain John Coffey, Jack Hayes, tasked with safeguarding the southern and western frontiers of Texas. Houston's forward-thinking decision proved to be a pivotal factor in repelling Mexican invasions in 1842 and ensuring the protection of white settlers against Indian attacks in the ensuing three years. Captain Hayes played a critical role in enhancing the quality of recruits, implementing rigorous training programs for the newly enlisted rangers, and fostering a strong sense of unity within his command. This group of rangers would go on to produce renowned ranger captains, including WAA Bigfoot Wallace, Ben and Henry McCulloch, Samuel H. Walker, and Robert Addison Ad Gillespie. In 1846, Texas officially became part of the United States, marking the beginning of the Mexican-American War, when the U.S. sought to establish the boundary at the Rio Grande. During this two-year conflict, the Texas Rangers were called upon to support the American Army, and their remarkable achievements in battle earned them international recognition as a formidable fighting force. Mounted on well-equipped horses and armed with a diverse array of weapons, the Rangers were so effective against Mexican guerrillas that they garnered the nickname Los Diablos Tejanos, or the Texas Devils. With the conclusion of the Mexican-American War on February 2, 1848, the responsibility of safeguarding the Texas frontier fell upon the United States. In the absence of an official role, the Texas Rangers began to lose some of their renowned captains and frontier defenders. A decade later, in the spring of 1858, the Rangers briefly returned to active duty when they were dispatched north to the Red River to address a group of Comanche Indians. However, in 1861, when Texas seceded from the United States during the Civil War, a new organization known as Terry's Texas Rangers was established in Houston. Under the leadership of Colonel Benjamin Franklin Terry, 
many former rangers enlisted in his ranks. During the challenging period of reconstruction between 1865 and 1873, the rangers were appointed as the state police, entrusted with enforcing unpopular new laws associated with Texas rejoining the United States. This era tarnished their reputation among war-weary Texans. While they functioned as a military-style police unit when enforcing these new laws and combating Indians or Mexicans, they operated more like traditional lawmen and posses when pursuing outlaws. A significant shift occurred in May 1874 when the state Democrats returned to power, and Governor Richard Koch, along with the legislature, allocated $75,000 to organize six companies of 75 rangers each. By this time, Texas was plagued by outlaws, Indian threats along the western frontier, and Mexican bandits wreaking havoc along the Rio Grande. These new ranger units were strategically stationed throughout the state and collectively referred to as the Frontier Battalion. During this era, the ranger service assumed a role that blended aspects of an army and a police force. In 1877, the Texas Rangers embarked on a pursuit of the infamous outlaw, John Wesley Hardin. Hardin had been on the run since he killed Deputy Sheriff Charles Webb in Brown County back in 1874. Determined to bring him to justice, Texas Ranger John Barkley Armstrong, also known as McNelly's Bulldog, obtained permission to chase Hardin across state lines. The confrontation reached its climax when they finally confronted the notorious outlaw on a train in Pensacola, Florida. It led to an inevitable shootout, resulting in Hardin being rendered unconscious, one of his gang members losing their life, and the rest of the gang being apprehended on July 23, 1877. In the spring of 1878, Sam Bass and his gang embarked on a spree of heists, robbing two stagecoaches and four trains within a 25-mile radius of Dallas. Their actions triggered a relentless pursuit by a special Texas Ranger unit under the leadership of Junius Peak across North Texas. Bass managed to elude his pursuers until one of his associates, Jim Murphy, decided to cooperate with the law. As the base gang rode south with intentions to rob a small bank in Round Rock, Murphy contacted Major John B. Jones, commander of the Frontier Battalion of Texas Rangers. In Round Rock, Texas, Major Jones orchestrated an ambush, leading to a fierce clash between the gang and the Rangers on July 19, 1878. Amid the chaos, Sam Bass's close companion, Seaborn Barnes, lost his life, but Sam himself sustained injuries although he managed to escape on horseback. The following day, he was discovered in a weakened state in a field north of town and brought back to Round Rock, where he succumbed to his injuries on July 21st. In the following years, the Frontier Battalion managed to apprehend over 3,000 Texan outlaws. However, as time passed, the frontier itself began to fade away by 1882. During the subsequent three decades, the Texas Rangers saw a decline in their prominence and prestige. Nonetheless, they continued to sporadically deal with cattle rustlers, confront Mexican and Indian raiders along the Rio Grande, and at times shielded African Americans from white lynch mobs. As the 20th century approached, critics began calling for a reduction or even the abandonment of the Texas Rangers. Consequently, the Frontier Battalion was dissolved in 1901, and the Ranger force was downsized to four law enforcement companies, each consisting of 20 men. Ranger duties were subsequently redirected toward maintaining law and order among the citizens of Texas. However, when violence escalated along the Rio Grande, the Rangers found themselves engaged in numerous violent clashes with Mexican nationals. <laughs>